Hey everyone, what's going on? It's Jesse Lee, and you can follow me along on my journey as I heal from stage four colon cancer diagnosis. So hi, I'll answer this question because I love it. Um, can I please ask what made you come to the decision I have chemotherapy? Yeah, sure. By the way, shout out to um, TikTok for finding out that I'm a wavy hair girl. How I didn't know this, I, I don't know. It's kind of embarrassing. <laughs> Anyway, so sure, this was actually not an easy decision to come to, and um, well, I guess I shouldn't really say that. It ended up actually being a pretty easy, easy decision to come to, although I felt incredibly pressured to um, still do chemotherapy. Full Fox and Avastin were the uh, recommendations from two different oncologists and then full, just Full Fox um, from another one. So I was diagnosed as stage four when my pathology came back from surgery and had it had um, and this was March 2023. So I was diagnosed with colon cancer February 17, 2023. Diagnosed as stage four because it had metastasized here, here, uh, and in my stomach, which is far from the colon. Um, uh, in March, after pathology came back from surgery, and I made the decision because every oncologist that I spoke to was talking to me about quality of life and was talking to me about how there's absolutely no cure for this. So 34 years old, told there's no cure, um, was actually told by M a Dr. M.D. Anderson, who I've never said his name publicly, but I really feel like I want to. Um, he death sentenced me. He told me that I was going to be dead in um, six to eight months if I do nothing, which means I definitely would. So I would be dead probably by October. Um, and my prognosis was definitely that I would not see Christmas. Then I went to another doctor as well who said essentially the same thing. There's no cure. There's no cure. There's no cure. There's no cure. Was also told that if I were to take full Fox and Avastin, it would be my best chance of living for two and a half years. I was also then told there would be no quality of life. I could not travel. I could not do the things I wanted to. I'd be very weak, very tired. Um, they went through all of these uh, not like my guess hypotheticals, if you will, very common. I don't even want to call them side effects because there's effects of the chemotherapy because I've never been anti-chemo. Uh, I just wanted to make the right decision for me. And I said, well, if you're going to tell me that I'm going to be dead, if you're, if this is the prognosis you're playing God with that I have until October, I would like to live until October with full energy, being able to travel, live my life, uh, do things that make me feel happy and then just do my own research. And then I started researching. It was stuff like my keys, and this is a book I ended up against. It was reading about Gerson therapy. It was reading everything from crispy cancer. It was watching documentaries. It was finding people on the internet who uh, have cured themselves from stage four colon cancers. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And did not use uh, the traditional oncology route of standard of care, which is your surgery, your chemotherapy, your radiation. And so I just decided to make radical life choices and let my body heal. I have the understanding that dis-ease is caused by a lot of stressors, a lot of anger, a lot of uh, environmental factors, toxins, etc. And I just committed to switching to uh, a lifestyle that is completely different than how I had been living. So um, this is not me giving you medical advice. If you're somebody who you feel like chemotherapy is the best option for you, by all means, um, I look at the way I was living my life compared to how I am living my life now, and I've made ra many, many, many radical changes, many radical changes. And so, you know, I, I, I'm not, I don't want to die either way, um, obviously. However, what's really important to me is that I have a life that not only am I proud of, but a life that reflects who I am as a person. And um, I did not want to be with no hair, miserable, weak, turning into a skeleton in a hospital and just die. And the only, I think the only dead body that I've seen, um, well, that's not true. Uh, I've seen two dead bodies, I guess. But uh, one of the only the only dead body I ever saw that died from cancer was my aunt, and she fought 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 breast cancer, and she was almost sixty years old and she passed away, and she was an actual skeleton. Like when I kissed her goodbye and she went into the back of the um, the ambulance, um, I literally. I, I, everything with it she she was a skeleton and um i saw how much pain she was in from the chemotherapy i saw the sores on her skin i saw all of that and 
if I were to go out, which I still do not believe this disease will kill me, okay? Um, I would like it to be on my terms. So when people have screamed at me in comments and yelled at me and said horrible things about me and I delete probably no less than 25, 30 comments a day that are hateful on my social media still to this day, um, I just wish more people understood, A, it's my life, I'm not hurting anybody. I'm clearly getting healthier, I think. And, uh, you know, maybe people need to question a little bit all the things that they have known to be true, you know. So, I don't really know. I'm just rambling now. So, I'll let you guys go. But that's the answer to that question. Wasn't really a hard decision for me. I'm choosing life. And I'm choosing vibrancy. And I'm choosing nutrition. So, see you all on the other side.